Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me. I'm very uh, glad and proud to be here in front of you. Um, we are going to discuss about perhaps a new therapeutic option in patients with uh, PRS. Uh, Dr. Pepper has described everything, so you know almost everything. Just a few words uh, about what we are doing at Meijer Hospital and in my group. So I'm a physician, I'm a nephrologist, and I have also a research lab at the, at the hospital. And we are working on kidney disease involving the AKT and TOR pathway. But also we are working on rare disorder involving, involving also this uh, pathway. And we are trying to figure out some new therapeutic option or sometimes some uh, new biomarker. And this is the view of the hospital. So uh, I'm running during all the day and all the week during these two <laughs> buildings. You have the clinical building just uh, at the bottom and then the research lab is at the top. And so during all the day, I'm always ready. Um, you know this pathway fairly well. So this is a ubiquitous pathway that you have in all your cells, except the uh, red cells. And you know that once this cell, this pathway is affected, your cell is going to grow and to proliferate in excess. And this pathway, this PHI3, KNX, AKT, and TOR pathway, is affected in many cancer. You have gain of function mutation of this pathway in cancer, and this is uh, um, um, target for a pharmaceutical company. You know all these pictures, and you know also these papers. So you know everything. So how I came into <laughs> this disorder? Uh, so in fact, I was not uh, aware about anything uh, related to Clough syndrome since three years ago. Uh, the story came uh, with this uh, patient, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is uh, 27 uh, years old. He came to visit me in 2015, in September 2015, so almost three years ago. Uh, he had a Clough syndrome uh, with a genetic test that was positive for this PI3 kinase gene. He had multiple vascular abnormalities, as you can see, uh, involving the back, uh, the limb, the abdomen, etc. etc. He had multiple surgery, 32 surgery during his life, multiple radiological embolization. And unfortunately, in 2008, he became paraplegic due to spinal compression uh, due to venous malformation. And so, uh, in 2008, the physician, so he was living in the south of France, in Bordeaux, uh, the physician there uh, decided to give him some uh, serolimus rapamycin uh, to try to improve his condition, but unfortunately, in his case, the rapamycin has not been effective during the 10 years of treatment. He had good trust level. And he was taking the pill uh, daily. Uh, he moved to Paris for uh, his uh, studies. He is an engineer, uh, aircraft engineer. And uh, unfortunately, uh, since 2013, he became, um, he, he was starting to feel uh, less and less uh, good because of uh, really severe heart dysfunction. He had congestive heart dysfunction. To give you an example, the normal cardiac output is uh, 3 liters per minute, and the uh, uh, cardiac output of Emmanuel was 18 liters per minute. So we had a huge congestive heart failure with edema, and unfortunately couldn't go uh, uh, to uh, work anymore, he was staying at home. Um, he came to visit uh, uh, me because he started to develop some uh, chronic kidney disease in relationship to this uh, heart dysfunction. So we did a kidney biopsy. Uh, we turned around uh, Emmanuel during a long time. We had a lot of discussion with uh, the vascular surgeon and uh, the radiologist to try to see if we can do something to improve his condition. And unfortunately, we came to the conclusion that uh, we had no treatment for him. We could only uh, uh, provide supportive care. And uh, we uh, informed him uh, about this, uh, uh, our conclusion. Just to give you a few uh, clinical details, uh, here you have his uh, weight in red. So he was uh, uh, something like 85 kilos. Uh, you have here the chest gift, but also the waist circumference. You will understand why. And we did some uh, markers, blood markers. This PNP in red here, it's a marker of uh, congestive heart failure. The normal, heart, uh, the normal BNP is below 100, so it was ranging around 2,000, 3,000 with appropriate therapeutics. And in blue, you have the serum creatinine level, which is a marker of kidney function. And the normal serum creatinine level is below 100, and it was around 200. 
I won't go through that, but this is the scanner of Emmanuel, a CT scan, and you will understand why I will show you that uh, a little bit later. I told you that you received rapamycin during uh, almost 10 years without any efficiency, unfortunately, and rapamycin is an mTOR1 inhibitor. And you know that this patient has a PI3K and a C alpha mutation. So the mutation is located upper on the pathway, and the PI3K and C alpha is regulating the AKT mTOR pathway, but it's also regulating many other pathways that are not represented here. And I saw that since this patient was bearing a mutation that you can find in some cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, no. Probably this uh, uh, pathway and this gene could be an interest for uh, the pharmaceutical company that were working in uh, the field of oncology. So I went through uh, the literature in 2015, in uh, October 2015, and that is what I found at that time. In fact, this pathway is a great hope for a pharmaceutical company in oncology. They were developing some pan pi 3 kinase inhibitors because you have different types of pi 3 kinase, class 1, class 2, class 3, and among these classes you have some sub-units, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and so on. So some groups, some pharmaceutical companies were developing some pan pi 3 kinase inhibitors, others on PI3 kinase inhibitors and mTOR inhibitors, <coughs> drug inhibitors, and few uh, pharmaceutical companies were uh, trying to design some isoform selective PI3 kinase CLF inhibitors. And I saw that probably the pump PI3 kinase inhibitors uh, would be associated with a lot of side effects in patients because uh, all these PI3 kinase are working on many cell pathways and involved in many cell functions. So I decided to try to obtain uh, uh, one of these uh, uh, specific PI3K and CLF inhibitors. For some reason, I've contacted Novartis. Uh, that was the one that was the most advanced at the time uh, in uh, its clinical, tri in clinical trial. Novartis in 2015 was in phase one clinical trial in oncology, meaning that the drug is not available. It's only available for uh, uh, clinical trial. And uh, I contacted them, uh, Noratis France, after a long discussion. They told me, okay, if you have the uh, approbation from the French regulatory agency, we will provide you the drug. So I went to see the uh, regulatory agency and uh, I convinced them to uh, try to use this drug in this first patient. So the drug is called BYL719. I'm going to show you the, the, oh, you have the name here. It's an oral pill that you take daily. And uh, we decided to use the lowest possible dose with the BYL. Uh, in fact, in the phase one clinical trial from Novartis, the lowest dose was 250 mg. In the clinical trial, they were starting at 250 mg per day, and they were increasing the dose up to one gram per day in association with chemotherapy. So we decided to use the lowest dose possible and then to try to increase if necessary. So we got the authorization on the 24th of December, that was its uh, Christmas gift, and uh, we decided to start at the beginning of January 2016, so two years and six months ago. I remind you that this life expectancy was, ex was supposed to be around six months. And so we uh, started the drug, and very, very quickly we had uh, an impressive result. He started to feel better very quickly, uh, to lose some weight, uh, he has lost something like 35 kilo now. Uh, we saw some improvement in the chest yeast and the weight circumference. I'm going to show you that. And we took uh, many, many pictures of Emmanuel. So Emmanuel here is lying on the back. You have uh, the flank here with this huge venous malformation. And very quickly, one week after, but week after week, months after months, we could see a dramatic improvement in his general status, but also uh, in his uh, appearance. Uh, this uh, vascular malformation has decreased up to 80% now. I'm going to reach, okay, this is the last one here. So uh, two weeks ago, the beginning of July, uh, he is still alive. Uh, he is in a better condition. He could go back to work. Uh, he's doing some sport with uh, the wheelchair. He could travel. He went to India uh, two months ago. So that was a great challenge for us. Uh, and uh, he took the pill every day. 
Another view of Emmanuel, so he's lying on the right side. Here you have, you have the left shoulder, the back is here, and how Emmanuel was like that two years and a half, and now uh, this tumor is also, uh, this vascular malformation is uh, greatly improved. He's not cured for sure, but uh, the treatment is still improving Emmanuel. Every time I'm seeing at the consultation, he's gaining some uh, uh, um, point, I would say, of quality of life. He's still losing some weight. He's, we are still uh, assisting to uh, a reduction of uh, venous and lymphatic malformation. Another view of Emmanuel, so he had a typical scoliosis that you can see here with uh, uh, this uh, vascular malformation on the back. And look at this uh, uh, infiltrating edema with uh, uh, adipose uh, excess on the flank and after two years of treatment, so uh, the spleen is more uh, uh, straight and uh, this uh, uh, adipose abnormal tissue has completely disappeared here. Another view from uh, Emmanuel, I told you that he is paraplegic, but uh, so we saw an improvement in the edema and also we are assisting now to a reduction in the volume of the left leg that was hypertrophic since the beginning of his life. And we feel that it is starting to have an impact on the bone of uh, Emmanuel. Another view uh, of Emmanuel, but also the, the uh, global aspect of the skin has completely changed. So we saw a dramatic reduction of this vascular malformation of the back. And also he had an hypertrophic here, uh, the left uh, ear was completely hypertrophic, and we saw a reduction of the size of the ear, and look at the nebus here, that has completely changed in color. Uh, and uh, uh, completely disappeared, it's not Photoshop. <laughs> we did multiple imaging in Emmanuel uh, and multiple CT scan, multiple MRI, and just to show you, this is a CT scan of the chest of Emmanuel. So to uh, explain you a little bit further, further, so he's lying on the back, the spin is here, the right hand is here, the left hand is here. <coughs> in black here you have the lung, and here this is the size of the heart. And all this area is related to vascular abnormalities with some calcification inside. And this is the same magnification two years and a half later. You can see that the thorax has completely shrunk. And look at also the size of the vascular malformation for sure, but also the size of the heart. The heart has decreased in size and in volume. Another view, uh, another CT scan of the abdomen, the same thing. The abdomen has shrunk and also the pelvis. So he's still taking the pill and he's still improved with the treatment. We did some MRI also. So this is an MRI of the patient. So he's just uh, in front of you. You have here the right arm, the left arm. This is a 3D reconstruction of the vessels. And the vena cava is here. And here you have huge vascular abnormalities. The vena cava, the diameter, the normal diameter is four centimeters. His diameter, he, here was 12 centimeters. And after two years of treatment, we saw uh, not a normal vena cava, but a decrease up to six centimeters. So it's a, a reduction in 50%. I told you that uh, Emmanuel had also some uh, congestive heart failure. So we did ultrasound, uh, heart ultrasound very quickly after the beginning of the treatment. And we saw an improvement uh, in the heart ultrasound. He had a normal uh, heart output right now, and we also measured the BNP level and a dramatic uh, decrease in the BNP level as well as an improvement in the uh, serum protein level. So we were extremely excited by this uh, uh, therapeutic and the dramatic effect of the drug. And I came back to the lab to see uh, the people who were working with me, and I said, okay, let's go a little bit further and try to see, I won't go into detail, but uh, let's go if we can try to create a mouse that will recapitulate uh, the phenotype of the patient. Because in the literature we were not able to find any satisfying model. I won't go into uh, details, but we uh, succeeded in creating, in creating a mosaic uh, of uh, a PRS in mice and this is what the mice look like. They are developing overgrowth, asymmetric overgrowth of the uh, leg. They are developing excessive adipose tissue, vascular abnormalities, and so on. <coughs> we uh, are working on that, and we have worked on the, the, uh, the, 
disease development, etc., uh, etc. Et And just to show you some uh, data on the treatment of the mice, it's working fairly well also. So it gives the treatment to the mice once they have some tumors. And in two weeks, it's an oral garbage. Uh, you can assist to uh, decrease the complete shrinkage of all the vascular tumors uh, and an improvement uh, in the quality of life, I would say, of the mice also. So uh, everything was uh, going very fast. Uh, we were extremely happy. And I thought probably there, not only one, there is not only one patient in my hospital. Uh, probably there are some other patients, uh, but we at that time had no vascular center in the department. So I went through Wikipedia. And this is what we, you can find uh, even this morning on Wikipedia. There, is, there are only 50 people with Clough syndrome uh, in the world. So <laughs> I saw that probably that was wrong. And uh, I went to uh, meet all my colleagues during the summer 2015, so six months after the beginning of uh, the treatment of the first patient. And I went to meet my colleague, uh, my geneticist colleague, my dermatologist colleague, different type of surgeon, plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon, uh, uh, urologist, and so on. And in fact, by talking with them, I found that they were following one patient, two patients, three patients, and in fact, very quickly, we could gather 20 patients. So during the summer 2016, we had 20 patients with us, and we uh, were uh, looking uh, at the data from uh, Emmanuel, and in the meantime, we had the case of a young girl, Melissa, nine years old. Uh, she had a Clough syndrome. Uh, she is less spectacular than Emmanuel, as you are going to see, but she had an overgrowth of the left leg, a scoliosis, and she had the huge vascular abnormalities of uh, the left kidney. And this vascular abnormality was involving the GE. And unfortunately, we were assisting to a growth of this vascular abnormality and uh, this uh, vascular abnormality was not uh, accessible to any surgery or radiological uh, immobilization. So during the summer, I went to Cinderellis again to ask if we could obtain the treatment for uh, this young girl. Uh, that was hard because, uh, uh, as you can imagine, they were not really happy to treat a young kid uh, without any data uh, in any kids. Uh, but since uh, our life prognosis was engaged, we obtained authorization from the uh, regulatory agency in France to treat her. So we, uh, she was the first in the world uh, treated with this therapy. So we decided to use the lowest dose as possible as novartis could develop, 15 mg per day. And uh, we started in September 2016, so almost two years ago. So here is Melissa. She has a scoliosis. You can see that the shoulders are not parallel uh, with the ground. She has a left leg hypertrophy. And after one year, but this is the same thing right now, she was uh, greatly improved with the treatment. We could see an improvement in the scoliosis, as you can see here, but I will uh, demonstrate that later. You can see that the shoulders are parallel to the ground. We assisted in uh, a reduction in the size and the volume of the left leg. She is still alive, she is doing extremely well. Another view of Melissa on the uh, side, and you can see that she had this huge vascular tumor that was uh, uh, in the abdomen, and the tumor has reduced by 80%. I'm going to show you that uh, just after. You can see also the left leg that has reduced in uh, volume. Another view of Melissa, because she had a scoliosis that was improved with the treatment. She had the surgical corset daily and nightly, and in fact, the surgeon had uh, decided to stop the surgical corset during the day, so she has only the corset during the night since one month now. And uh, we could also see the reduction in, in the reduction uh, in this uh, mass here, but also in uh, the volume of the left leg. We did many, many imaging of the brain, and here you see the 3D reconstruction of the vascular abnormality of the left kidney. So this tumor, uh, the volume of this tumor was 2.8 liters, and after uh, uh, no one year and 10 months, uh, it has decreased up to uh, 80% uh, without any side effect in Melissa and also in the first patient and without any surgery or radiological immobilization. 
Here, this is a view of her scoliosis, 3D reconstruction of the uh, uh, spin, and you can see that with uh, the treatment, we saw an improvement of the scoliosis. And I won't go into details, but we did some uh, PET scan, which is a particular PET scan that is uh, uh, showing the uh, hypermetabolic tissue, and we saw with the treatment a reduction in all the hypermetabolic tissue uh, that were affecting Melissa. So that was in September 2016, so we were extremely uh, happy and excited, and the uh, uh, data were starting to leak in France, uh, and so uh, we were contacted by many physicians and geneticists and dermatologists, and we started to have 20, 40, 60, and then 100 patients uh, at the beginning of 2017, so one year and a half ago. We decided to uh, uh, start to perform the genotyping at Necker. In Europe, we had only two centers that were performing the genotyping for PI3 kinase, Dijon and Lausanne. So now you have Necker Hospital. And uh, we have started to evaluate approximately that you have something like 1,000 to 2,000 patients with PI3 kinase mutation in France. And once we were reviewing all these patients, we had uh, 17 additional patients with either a life treatment condition or that were scheduled for a debulking surgery, meaning amputation, resection of organs, and so on. And we obtained the authorization from the RADIS, but also from the uh, regulatory agency to uh, treat these uh, 17 additional patients. We had uh, at the end of the study, 19 patients, including, including the two first patients, 15 kids and four adults, ranging from four years old up to 50 years old. And we decided arbitrarily to start it at 50 mg per day for all the kids and 250 mg for all the adults. And in fact, it's working in all patients that we have uh, treated. Uh, we saw some reduction in the size of uh, 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 hypertrophic leg, we saw an improvement in scoliosis, all the patients are still, still alive, we saw an improvement of uh, some vascular malformation, uh, and so on. Uh, many patients were chronically bleeding, and we could uh, uh, enter the bleeding with this uh, 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 treatment. Uh, many patients had uh, opioid treatment because of uh, uh, the pain, and we could stop uh, the morphine in uh, these patients. Here uh, are some other patients. And among all these 19 patients, we had two patients with uh, uh, MCM, uh, with uh, uh, mental retardation uh, and uh, um, chronic seizure. And we treated them and we uh, assisted in improvement in the intellectual capacity uh, and also in our, our general structure. Among these 19 patients, we had 10 different mutations involving the gene, uh, the PI3 kinase. They are represented here. And for each patient, we uh, had chosen uh, a target lesion that we have followed during the treatment with the MRI and we saw a decrease in uh, the lesion in all patients. And also in the two uh, MCM patients, we could uh, as, uh, see uh, we could see an improvement in the brain perfusion of uh, the patient. Among these 19 patients, we had uh, mucositis grade 1 in two kids uh, during a few days, uh, not, so nothing compared to rapamycin, and one patient was already diabetic before the treatment, this girl here, she, uh, the last one that we treated here, uh, she was 50 years old and uh, her weight was 150 kilos, so she was diabetic before the treatment. And we gave the treatment, we saw that the diabetes was less controlled, we introduced uh, insulin and now everything is doing well, but we had no other side effect. We have followed a lot of things in these patients organ toxicity, the growth of the kids, and the puberty. So among these 19 patients, the growth is still concerned as well as the puberty. We don't have any data on the fertility of these patients. And we don't have any data for sure in a, a long-term treatment. And the last patient that we have treated uh, uh, was last summer, um, uh, in July 2017, so Zoe. Uh, Zoe is a four-year uh, girl, 
she has this huge vascular malformation of the arm, but she also had a huge vascular tumor uh, compressing the heart in the lung. I'm going to show you that. She was screaming all the day. She was resistant to all painkillers. Uh, she had a lot of morphine during all the day without any improvement. And uh, she was referred to her center to have an, an amputation of the arm and the hemithorax. And after one year of treatment, uh, she is still alive and she is uh, in better shape and better condition. We assisted in uh, shrinkage of the right arm, uh, a better distribution of the adipose tissue everywhere uh, in her, on her body, the nose of you as well. So she went back to school uh, in last September. Uh, another view of her, she went to the swimming pool for the first time this summer and uh, she had here some uh, lymphatic abnormalities that has uh, almost completely disappeared. She was swimming all the time. She has no more swimming. Some venous malformation. She was bleeding uh, mostly from this uh, venous malformation. She's not bleeding anymore. And uh, this is an MRI of uh, her chest. Here, so she is just in front of you, right arm, left arm, the head is here, and uh, look at this huge tumor, and after three months of treatment, the tumor has almost completely disappeared. So it's improving all the patient. For the paper, we have stopped the follow-up at six months in the first patient, but they are still on treatment, on the patient, without side effect. And we are receiving uh, pictures like that or emails like that from patients and their family. And these two patients are the patient with MCM. And uh, we saw really a dramatic improvement in his uh, intellectual capacity as well as this girl. She is now able to run a bicycle, she was not able. And this one uh, is able to do some puzzle, 1000 pieces puzzle. And this patient was, he, he is a 15 years old guy. He was, he was not going to school, he had a huge vascular malformation of the kidney that was bleeding chronically and this vascular malformation was, was compressing the spin, uh, spinal cord and uh, he was lying on the bed every day, uh, uh, every day and we saw that his life was uh, really uh, a nightmare and we decided to give him the treatment and after 10 months of treatment he was able to work, uh, something that was absolutely impossible a uh, uh, few uh, few years ago, <laughs> even he can dance. <laughs> so uh, at the conclusion, it sounds that treatment uh, that is under development by novartis in oncology is extremely pr promising in these patients. Of course, we will need a uh, uh, well-designed uh, clinical trial to conclude that kind of things. Um, but this is what we call the precision medicine. You have a mutated gene, you have an abnormal protein, and this drug is going to bind the abnormal protein and then to block its uh, action. So uh, you are just blocking the uh, 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 abnormal thing, I would say, in the body. So, of course, I'm not alone in, on this work, and these are all the people uh, from my group that uh, has worked on the different mass model and in vitro study. We are lucky to have some uh, fundings, and if you come one day to Necker, uh, you will see that. So this is my hospital, and uh, I'm sure that you, are, you know Kisari, the painter, uh, and uh, this guy, Kisari, American painter, uh, usually draw people like that, that were in funny position, but symmetric people. And he came 20 years ago at Necker, and he drew a painting on this chimney. And if you look carefully, this is the first time I've checked everywhere, where you have some children with overgrowth of one size. And so perhaps he saw that something could be there, or perhaps he has seen one patient there. Thank you.